You gonna start it off? Hi guys, welcome. Hi guys, we wanted to get a quick video in tonight before we went to bed. Uh, we went and saw The Upside tonight and we were pretty excited. Yeah, we had heard great things about the movie, but um, we've had a lot of problems with Jared's fan. It was a top priority to go see this movie and it didn't disappoint. Not at all. Here we go. You excited? I am. Thanks for getting the door. Belle, you like the movie? <laughs> this guy likes the movie. That is hilarious. <laughs> I, I heard some criticisms about the movie because they didn't get a quadriplegic actor to play the part, but I didn't I didn't really have a problem with that. He did such a great job. I mean, it would be awesome to see a quadriplegic play the role of a quadriplegic. Yeah, I would love to see that, uh, but it, it didn't detract anything from the movie that he yeah. wasn't for me. I think they definitely did their research. They thought of almost everything. Like, I didn't see any blaring signs i mean no he played the part very well like even i noticed his like belly sticking out you know like <laughs> the quad belly that we all get like, they, they played that up well so I, I i thought it was very well done they touched on a lot of topics really well i felt like uh, i could relate to the to the not sleeping um to the being holed into your apartment and not really wanting to go out uh, he even had a hospital bed. Yeah. I noticed that, which is really because cool. he's in like this mansion of an apartment, and he has caregivers that live in. He has a cook. Um, which I don't want to give away too much of the movie, but right. uh, just the little specifics like that. Like they did a really good job of like Jared used to have a hospital bed, and it was actually out in his living room, <laughs> and he needed to be in the hospital bed because during the night he had to adjust if his body was uncomfortable. Yeah, I have a lot of spasticity and stuff like that. And when, you know, when I was alone, um, I needed a hospital bed to make those adjustments. But now I just wake Hannah up. <laughs> and it helps that we're in like a larger bed. So if he needs to roll over or if he has spasms, like there's no concerns or less concern of him rolling off of the bed. For sure. And there's room for Belle. Found a lot of points in the movie really relatable. Uh, and not just uh, from Brian, the, the quadriplegic, you know, Kevin Hart, how he wanted to improve himself as this relationship developed. You know, I, I definitely feel like I've started improving myself as our relationship develops. You know, I've noticed some things that I became complacent in and I, I want to be better be, because of our relationship. And, and I saw that in the movie. Um, Brian really came out of his shell. Um, and, and I feel like that's been part of our relationship. You know, I used to spend most of my time in this apartment and- Riding your bike? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I have an FES bike and before the most recent research study I'm involved in, which I'm not allowed to ride that right now, um, but before that I would ride that for about three hours on average uh, a night, and that was pretty much my life. I would get back from therapy, ride my FES bike, go to bed, and then on the weekends, sometimes I'd put in, I think eight hours was the longest I put in on my bike on the weekend, but I just kind of hyper-focused on that and didn't do anything else, and it was... I, wish I had that motivation. <laughs> Well, it if wasn't only yeah. I could put eight hours in on my bike. Well, the electricity does it for me. I just have to sit there and take it. So, but you got an award. He won an award on Strava. That's true. What I, award was it? Uh, I was the God. What was it? Like I, I was, I was the the most active FES rider in the world. <laughs> they sent me a T-shirt. We should have framed that T-shirt. We threw it away. Awesome. The one t-shirt. <laughs> We've had to downsize the closet since we're getting ready to move. So a lot of those things have gone. Things that bring you joy. If it doesn't spark joy, we don't keep it. <laughs> it's hard for Jared. It was. It was. <laughs> I, I like to say that I'm more in tune with things that bring me joy. He has about three closets full of screen print tees. <laughs> used to have three closets There's still full. three closets full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back We're to the outside. 
we're it's past our bedtime, so you know we're just gonna <laughs> keep rambling on. Uh, some other things I definitely related to is you know Brian falling for his caregiver, which that's how <laughs> that's how we met and that's how this came about. So yeah, um, I had a coworker and she was working for Jared at the time, and I didn't know Jared when he was riding his FES bike, but. I just got the general idea that Jared spent a lot of time in his apartment and um, I just remember the first day meeting him. I met him one time before actually starting as his caregiver yeah. and I just couldn't get myself to stop talking, number one. I, I didn't really know what to say, but he was just so chill and so easy to talk to that it just all kind of just rambled out and I made like 20 commitments for us. Yeah. That first day. You told me just as long as we could go out to brunch every Saturday. That was that was like a stipulation of you taking the job. That we had to go out to brunch every Saturday. I enjoy my brunch. Yeah, as do I. <laughs> so, biscuits and gravy. Mm -hmm. But I was making all these plans without really even considering what it took to get him to those places. And that's, that's kind of one thing they touched on in the movie was getting out in public and, and the, the insecurities that, that you can have being out and meeting new people, you know, when, when Brian meets, uh, his pen pal out and, you know, things don't go exactly right. You know, ever since, ever since you started, like everything I throw at you, you just, you just take it in stride. You know, the, the bow program. Yeah. And they touched <laughs> yeah. on that. They did, they did. <laughs> That's funny. That was funny. Uh, yeah, I was told before I started that that would be my responsibility because I was weekend help. And I didn't know at all what I was getting myself into. I was just picking this up as a side gig because I'd planned to quit my job. Um, I was full-time sourcing for natural gas. But I wanted to quit my job to travel for a couple months or longer. I thought I would be gone for over a yes. year. <laughs> You're right. So, <laughs> plan to go back to work. So, my original plan was I'd saved up quite a bit. Um, I planned to travel solo for a couple months and then come back. I wanted to do a ski trip with my friends, um, meet back up with Jared in March, and then go to Australia. And I had already applied for a visa. I was granted a visa for a year. Um, but yeah, Jared kind of messed up all my plans. <laughs> He asked me to come home for Christmas, mm -hmm. and I thought that would be a good idea just to come back and see my family as well. But then I'm still here, and it's nearly February. So, yeah. right, so back to the bowel <laughs> program. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't know what I was getting into. I've never been a caregiver. I'm not a nurse. Um, the most I've done is nannying. Yeah. I'm changing diapers, but that hardly correlates. There was one time when you, one of the first few weeks that you worked where I, I did have a bowel issue. You remember that? In the neon yellow shorts. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's, that's one, like, you know, obviously from the moment she started, I, I had a pretty big crush on her. And there was one time uh, we had gone out and I was in my manual chair, you know, pushing myself around, you know, around downtown and stuff like that. And the one time, the one time <laughs> I don't get in my manual chair very much, especially during the winter. I, I work my arms a lot in therapy, and uh, I, yeah, I haven't been good about getting my manual chair. That's just that's there just we go. Thing. Yeah, but when I did, uh, yeah, I pooped my pants, <laughs> and I was so mortified because I I had this cute girl helping me out that I was you know crushing on big time, and then when we got back, I had to be like, uh, yeah, I need to take a shower and change my pants, and. You're just so, like, it was like nothing. Like, and that's how yeah, you've been about everything. But like, I can only imagine how that would feel. And it's like. Terrible. <laughs> it sucks. It's so. But, like, yeah. how else 
was I supposed to react? Yeah. Like, I think a non-reaction would be the best reaction. For sure. Well, I just... And then, I mean, it is uncomfortable. Like, sometimes, like, the very first time I did the bowel program, I remember, like, there was a towel on the back of your chair. Or ditch them. Mm -hmm. You have to insert a finger and then swirl it three times to stimulate. A pooping reflex. <laughs> That's it. How many times can we say poop? So, um... I just think after doing that the first time, it was a little weird and the smell hit me once like I came back in and I gagged the very first time. But I just remember like hiding my face in the towel and like trying to be so quiet so you wouldn't notice. Did you so notice? consider it, no. Yeah. No. I was trying to be like really cool about it. You were. <laughs> but that's the only thing. It was after that, it's just like, it's whatever. Like It's not a big deal at all. It's not that weird. It, it's way, like, I think it's way weirder, and it's a much bigger deal to me than it is to you. And I think a lot of things, like, I think Jared overthinks a lot of things. Yeah, I'm and in my head a lot with some of these things. Weirdly enough, one of my favorite aspects of the movie was that Brian Cranston was obsessed with opera. Kevin Hart becomes an opera fan. Right, which yeah. is funny because I love Andrea Bocelli with all of my heart. Um, my parents it's your took me. Favorite. It's my it's my favorite. That was your quote. <laughs> it was just really cute because I mentioned that to Jared my very first day that I'd ever met Jared, and then it was a couple weeks later that Jared casually brings up in conversation that Andrea Bocelli is going to be in Cincinnati, which is a large city not far from us. Yeah, it's like a little over an hour away. Right, but little did i know like he had bought us tickets it was right before i was leaving for my trip mm -hmm. and so he had planned that as like our last a little farewell i really liked you and i thought you were going to be gone for uh, an extended period of time so i just wanted to to blow it out before you left yeah and that was my goal was just to get him out of the apartment and so i think definitely wanted to try to do something and we went to so many festivals just anything that was going on around here. I was like, do you want to go? Like, because then I got to And we started a calendar. We did. That, that was when we really started getting... Um, a little more serious. Yeah. Yeah. But he he made a calendar and started adding, like, all these dates to it. <laughs> Just filling that thing up. It was another thing that we thought was really cool. It was uh, uh, Kevin riding on the back of the chair. Yes. Yes. So... so Oh, <laughs> well, I longboard mm -hmm. and I mentioned that to Jared and he was like, well, you know, I have a skateboard that attaches to the back of my chair and so you can ride that. It was really funny because they did that in the movie. Yeah, Kevin Hart was riding on the back of Brian's chair and that's kind of how we get her. Like she comes with me to therapy some days. We have a lot of videos of that. I've taken yeah. quite a few videos, so we'll insert one somewhere. So many relatable moments and, and parallels from the movie in, in our life. Yeah. I, I, we were just dying the whole we time. We were cracking up. It was so funny like, and just so relatable for us. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. One last thought about the movie before we go to bed because it's way past our bedtime. Yeah, it's 1245. It's time to turn it in. Jared has to get up at 6. I have to get up at 6. Yeah. We need to start going to bed earlier. We do. We've been rambling on for quite a while now, but... Yeah. Um, but the thing that I liked about it was just the positive message it brought yeah. about caregiving, about quadriplegics, about just like the happy life that he was able to live. Like he's a normal person. Right. And I think um, when I started dating Jared, like it was different for me, but I think... The hardest part was trying to explain to other people our relationship. And it's not that they were negative about it in any way. It was just, it's hard to comprehend. Yeah. People, you know, I think they're weirded out by things they don't understand or, you know, don't have any experience with. And they, they think it's so strange, but like I'm just a regular person, you know? All right. Well, those are our thoughts. Yeah. We got to get to bed. Rambled on quite a bit. Way longer than we planned on.
but we'll try to trim this down and then we'll go more in depth in a lot of the other things that we touched on yeah uh and we'll we're definitely ramping up videos we're trying to make content we're just getting started so very new at this we're figuring it out right so but if you like what you see and want to continue to follow us, um, please subscribe. Like our page. Shoot us an email if you have any questions. It's Positively paralyzed at gmail.com. Exactly. So, all right. See y'all later. Good night. All right. And we both look over to the laptop. <laughs> yeah, can you see that? That's a funny joke. <sighs> uh, and so you you all just bring up the topic. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh.